The spoon floats above my kitchen countertop. I remember when it appeared, I think it's always been there, choosing to be ignored. Once I noticed it, I was immediately afraid. How could a spoon float? How could a physical object go against everything I'd ever been taught? The spoon does not care what is possible, it is a spoon. It floats upright, with the handle pointing to the floor and the bowl towards the ceiling. It almost never moves, it has no need to. It is a spoon. It seems so mundane and simple, but how can something so peculiar be anything but terrifying? The single object defies everything anyone has ever known. A magician may perform tricks, but this spoon is doing something that no human has ever been able to perform. By defying nature in this way, it goes against every rule the universe has ever had, and brings the nature of reality into question. But how can this be? It is a spoon. It looks ordinary. Its reflective metal shows no signs of age. Every day I check it, the spoon is still there. It always is. Sometimes I think about touching it, but I can never bring myself to try. I don't think it would allow me anyway. And as my best friend, they could not see the spoon. Look, I showed them, the week it appeared. Do you see it? His blank expression staring right through the countertop showed me that he could not see. Perhaps his mind could not comprehend it, or perhaps he was not chosen to have this revealed to him. I should have never attempted to show anyone. Unveiling the spoon is not my decision to make. Before he could speak, the spoon moved. The only time it has ever have. It lodged itself under his eyelid, only the handle still visible. Protruding from the small gap in his eye socket, the handle tilted upwards, putting pressure onto his eye until it no longer remained in the socket. We were both probably screaming, but I don't remember. My mind was too broken to hear. Blood poured to the floor as the spoon continued to move inside his head, as if it were searching for something. It moved effortlessly, like digging ice cream out of a pot. After what seemed like minutes, although it may have been closer to mere seconds, the spoon returned to its original position, completely clean. The crystal clear reflection of the room remained on its surface, no hints of the horrors that just took place moments prior. At first, my friend fell to the floor. Then, suddenly, he was no longer there. I didn't see him disappear, but I didn't look away either. It was as if different parts of reality seeped together, closing around him. The whole room looked as it always had. I began to wonder if I was crazy. Had anything even just happened? Things were happening too fast for anything to seem real. Things don't seem real now. I never saw my friend again. I never told anybody what I saw. I'm not even sure how I would. Today, as I entered my kitchen, I stepped over the spot where my friend once had been. The spoon was next to me. I tried to ignore it, as I often do. But somehow, I couldn't look away. Something in the spoon caught my attention. In the inverted reflection where the bowl curves inward, I saw my friend lying at my feet, in a puddle of blood, his eye next to him. I tried to look away, but I was not allowed. The privilege of ignorance was taken from me as I relived the events that took place against my friend. Yet, all the while, a single thought lodged into my brain as the spoon had once lodged in his. Why is this happening? This kitchen utensil doesn't care about what anyone thinks. It exists as a portal to the unknown. The only connection between reality and unexplained terror. It could have been any object, any physical object. But here it is, manifesting in my kitchen, a few feet away from where I make sandwiches. It is not a spoon. It is a herald of darkness.